Hi, I'm Mark. Today I'll discuss how a classic theorem from differential geometry can help us robustly parameterize meshes. We introduce a new algorithm for surface parameterization that succeeds on low-quality input geometry and complex cone configurations, and also computes maps to the sphere. All three are enabled by a recent discrete uniformization theorem, which essentially states that any triangle mesh with any choice of cones can be parameterized by a discrete conformal map. But even with this theorem in hand, there's still quite a lot of work required to apply it to meshes in practice. Our algorithm is a generalization of CETM. For those of you who know that paper, here's the difference. First, unlike the fixed triangulation CETM, we perform Ptolemy flips during optimization, which completely avoids the problem of invalid geometry. To keep track of the correspondence between the original mesh and this mesh with flipped edges, we introduced a robust new data structure consisting of normal coordinates and roundabouts. Third, we propose a new interpolation scheme based on the light cone, which produces much better results than ordinary linear interpolation in the setting. And finally, we also compute discrete conformal maps to the sphere. I'll start by talking about optimization with Ptolemy flips. The smooth uniformization theorem guarantees that any surface can be conformally mapped to one of constant curvature. Amazingly, it has a discrete analog. Any valid vertex curvatures can be realized by some discrete conformal map, no matter how wild the mesh is. And you can even find these maps just by minimizing a convex energy. However, there's a big problem. This minimization doesn't always work on a fixed mesh, since triangles can degenerate. Luo originally suggested handling this by flipping an edge at the moment when a triangle degenerates, but this causes discontinuous jumps in the energy, voiding any convergence guarantees. Later, Gu and colleagues proposed flipping edges to maintain a Delaunay triangulation instead, which keeps the energy smooth, but requires pausing the flow at exactly the right time to flip. We instead pursue an alternative strategy enabled by hyperbolic geometry. The main idea proposed by Bobanko and colleagues is to reinterpret our triangle mesh as an ideal polyhedron. This leads to a rich alternative perspective on what it means for meshes to be conformally equivalent. For us, the upshot is that whenever we flip an edge, we compute its new length using Ptolemy's formula. We can do so at any time, even when the triangle inequality doesn't hold and the Euclidean edge flip is undefined. Importantly, flipping to Delaunay with Ptolemy flips always produces the exact same mesh that we would have obtained if we'd stopped during scaling to maintain a Delaunay triangulation the entire time. Now I'll discuss our correspondence data structure. We need to track how our flipped triangulation sits over the input mesh, but unfortunately existing schemes don't suffice. The overlay mesh of Fisher and colleagues explicitly store all intersections between triangulations, which gets very complicated and computationally expensive in our setting, where we actually have to track three triangulations. On the other hand, the signpost data structure of Sharp and colleagues relies essentially on floating point, which can become inaccurate in the complicated hyperbolic triangulations that we encounter. We develop a new implicit integer encoding, which always maintains the correct correspondence. Our data structure is comprised of normal coordinates, a classic tool from geometric topology, and a new concept which we call roundabouts. It fully determines the geometry of intersections between two triangulations and is easy to update after an edge flip. Next, I'll discuss our interpolation scheme. In 2008, Springborn and colleagues showed that in the fixed triangulation setting, you can get smoother maps by performing what's called projective interpolation rather than standard linear interpolation. However, it's not obvious how to perform this projective interpolation across several triangulations. We introduce a new algorithm for variable triangulation projective interpolation by interpolating in the hyperboloid model of hyperbolic space. Finally, I'll discuss our spherical uniformization algorithm. So far, I've been talking about flattening, but we can also apply all this machinery to map surfaces to the sphere. More explicitly, given any genus zero triangle mesh, we compute a discretely conformally equivalent polyhedron, which is convex and inscribed in the sphere. This boils down to a similar, but more complex optimization problem involving even more hyperbolic geometry. Now, some results. We evaluated our algorithm on several challenging datasets. We tested cone flattening on MPZ and Thingy 10K, and spherical uniformization on brain scans and other anatomical surfaces. We successfully produced locally injective discrete conformal maps on all models, with the exception of Thingy 10K where we achieved a 97.7 success rate due to floating point issues on some of the most degenerate models. The code was generally fast, often finishing in a matter of seconds, although it took up to half an hour on a few of the most challenging Thingy 10K inputs. We found that Ptolemy flips provide a definite performance benefit, often providing a 2x speedup on MPZ, for example. On models with poorly conditioned triangles, we find that our projective interpolation provides a huge improvement over ordinary linear interpolation. And even when the fixed triangulation CETM succeeds, our variable triangulation method and novel interpolation can produce much smoother results. We can prescribe curvatures or scale factors on mesh boundaries, mirroring the degrees of freedom of smooth conformal maps. And finally, we can produce continuous parameterizations, even on multiply connected domains such as this car, simply by filling in any gaps before flattening. Finally, some limitations of future work. Although our algorithm is guaranteed to work in exact arithmetic, floating point can be a problem in extreme cases. For an investigation of higher precision schemes, see the concurrent work of Campen and colleagues. Second, while variable triangulations are the key to our robustness, it's sometimes undesirable that we output texture coordinates on a refined mesh rather than the input mesh itself. It would be interesting to investigate schemes to simplify such output, perhaps by trying to unflip edges. Finally, if you only care about local injectivity rather than full conformal maps, then you can track correspondence in a simpler way. There may be room for other optimizations in this setting too. Thanks for listening.